What's up guys, Subzeric here, back for a, another VOD review, and today I'm coming at you with a VOD from Kai's Project PVE Masters. So if you guys didn't catch this this uh, this morning, this was a kind of global TFT tournament where people from some, some of the best players from, from all the regions competed on PVE, they grinded a bunch of games, and then we cut to a top 24 uh, based on how well they did in those games on the, the PBE ladder, their BLP, their beta LP is what got them up here on, uh, on you know, prior to the tournament. And then they played uh, 24 players, played six games, and now we're cutting to a top eight and tomorrow's the finals. So our top eight here really, really stacked. So Cash and TFT Faker, a fangirl, this is, the, these are both two Brazilian players. Cash is a Brazilian player and this player, I forget what their real name is, but they're a Brazilian player. Uh, this player, I'm trying to remember, this player's a, a North American player that lives in Quebec, I believe, or they compete on NA, they're actually French. Um, then Taro from Japan, very notable Japanese player. Rainplosion from NA, woo. YBY1, who we're gonna review today, and then Keza and Hanshing from China. So, I mean, stacked, right? They're, they're people, there are multiple people in this lobby who have been in world finals lobbies, um, but I wanted to VOD review YBY1 because, I mean, I love VOD reviewing YBY1. He streamed his entire tourney run, and this is the final game. He needed a pretty good score to make it. Obviously, he did end up making it, um, but it was also just, it was a uh, it was a crazy game. So let me translate this real quick because I forget what portal it is. This is Treasure. Oh, this is, this is the one where um, on... On five one, you have like the, the it's the treasure dragon one, uh, which is uh, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean th this was a, a really really fun day. I not really co-streamed, I guess just streamed, right? We were kind of the main broadcast, but I streamed uh, on Kai's channel um, this uh, this day of games. It was really really fun. Got to see a lot of how the meta is developing on PVE so far, like what comps people are leaning towards, what people uh, think is, is really, really strong in the meta right now. So yeah, it, it was a blast. Um, and I can talk about some of that as we get further into the game. So far, we have this opener here where we have the Seraphine 2 plus this uh, this Lilia here. And we get offered a very, very strong opener here, which is this Sugarcraft um, crown augment. Um, so you get the Sugarcraft, you get the, the Rumble, um, and then I guess we'll see what this uh, full item is here. But statistically, this is one of the best prismatics in the game. If you just look at PBE stats, which are like kind of real, kind of fake. Um, there are a couple of places you can go. I showed you tactics stat tools last time. So I'll also show you meta TFT, where if you just open it up, like augments here, you can, um, or you have to go to, oh, you have to filter. Um, okay, maybe it's like here, PBE comps and then go to augments. Does it do it that way? I mean, oh, okay, you have to filter it here through PBE. There we go. Uh, but you can see, if you scroll down a tiny little bit, Sugarcraft Crown averages a 3.99 according to Meta TFT on PBE, one of the best, fourth best prismatic in the game uh, according to Meta TFT. I guess if you want to like sort by 2-1, there's there's maybe some, uh, it's the second best at 2-1 according to statistics. And it makes sense, right? We can also hover this to see. It gives it a redemption um, as well. And you can understand why this would be so good, right? Um, it gives you access to an emblem and a full item that is going to stack your Sugarcraft, and it guarantees that you're going to get six Sugarcraft later, as long as you find all the other Sugarcraft uh, units, which allows you to, you know, get six Sugarcrafts, stack Sugarcraft a lot faster, and potentially get to that big Sugarcraft uh, cash out. Uh, I guess YBY also notes that we have the Treasure Dragon coming up later. There's more items that we're going to get from that. So this is going to be a pretty high item economy game. So he grabs that Sugarcraft crown. The only slightly sus thing here is we don't actually have... Oh, we, we did pick up the Soraka in shop here. Um, but he kind of risked it for the, the biscuit here. He knows that his opener is, is really, really good. And wow, he doesn't even play... Um, I mean, he, he doesn't need to play Soraka yet, right? You know, we only really need to play it. We should certainly hold the Soraka. We don't need to play her now, you know, like we have the, the two Sugarcraft in right now. Um, but we didn't actually have any Sugarcraft units. Now we're guaranteed to have two in. He's going to hold the Soraka. I, I, wow, he isn't interested in holding the Soraka here. I'm surprised by this. Um, but yeah, uh, YUI knows that, like, he's guaranteed two Sugarcraft in that, you know, he has the emblem and he has... Um, the, the rumble guaranteed, so we can do that. The other reason to play around this is because we have this fairy opener, and I talked about this in my first ever Sugarcraft VOD. Fairy has really, really good inherent synergy with Sugarcraft because you get another full item. You get the, the fairy craft, the fairy craft, the, the fairy crown, 
uh, which is another item. So like, look at the start. And yeah, now I, I think he just missed that Soraka because he was trying to figure out his uh, his setup. Because yeah, I certainly think we should have picked that up if we could have. But you see 18 stacks per round. That's so, so much. Also, I think we did win on that flip there. So an extra one gold for us. Very nice. But as you can see here, three full items plus three full components. That is nine components total if you, you know, do the... I mean, I was going to say if you do the math, but it's not really much math. Um, and nine times two at two Sugarcraft gives you 18 stacks per round, which is a lot to, to start the game with. Uh, you know, you think about in like a default situation where you're just playing two Sugarcraft with like a three item opener, you would only be getting like six, um, six stacks per round, which is much lower than this uh, 18 stacks that we're getting because we have the the emblem, the full item, and the the fairy plus one um not even to to mention the fact that you can get like a five item opener and stuff like that um item wise here uh we had rod sword yeah let, let me go back and look at our open components here and see towards what we are interested in building here um because yeah i'm actually curious um okay so we have the chain the sword and the rod here with cloak open i'm looking at that potentially it looks like we're looking at maybe just the the chain vest for a higher cost unit I, the problem with you, you, you have to slam this. Are we just going to make Bramble? Wow. Why be why? Interesting. Um, he would rather pay. He, he would pay two gold. He would not pay two gold to turn this Bramble into a gargoyle is, I guess, the, the way I'm thinking about this, um, which is interesting because I think a lot of people, especially last set, would pay that. They would say, I would much prefer a gargoyle than a Bramble here. But YBY's idea is, is perhaps that Bramble is, you know, not, not too bad here. Interesting to me. Because, yeah, I think I definitely would have just gone for the gargoyle there, even though it's two less gold you get access to what I think most people would say is a, a higher quality uh, item in the, the Gargoyle. We're also playing around this Hunter, uh, which is kind of a funny little addition. It doesn't fit whatsoever with the board, but we hit a Twitch 2, we hit a Namzi 2, so we're playing this board right now. So yeah, I mean, we, we take those for sure. But I mean, as you can see, stacks wise, 74 stacks already. We're already going to get to, that's the third level, um, just by the end of this stage, which is just absolutely huge, right? And especially if we can pick up that Soraka, if we can pick up another Sugarcraft and uh, actually play to, uh, to four, then we'll be feeling really good because as you get more in, it, it allows you to stack up uh, even faster. And there, I, YVY, I, he is one of the, the best sort of like reactions whenever he like high rolls a unit, but there is a Gwen, which is a huge, 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 huge hit right now because just one more Sugarcraft and then we have that four. If we're, we're kind of maybe kicking ourselves that we didn't pick up that Sorak a while ago, but I think he didn't even realize that he had it in shop. So hopefully we can get to that plus one um, and get four in as soon as possible. We also get another Wukong here, so we are just gonna make gold here. Still not yet, but boom, there's a Jinx with the uh, with the charm that rerolls your shop. It's only three costs. Now we have four in, and we have a bunch of items to play around. This is interesting as well that it looks like, yeah, wow, wow, these are really cool slams. I mean, he knows that he has to slam here, and he just goes for the JG Edge of Night onto the Gwen here. JG, one of Gwen's best items, because you just want her to be able to crit and do stuff like this, jump onto the backline, and then start one-tapping backliners. The Edge of Night, pretty decent to drop aggro, because she doesn't really have that much inbuilt tankiness, and then ideally, like, healing as her last item. So... Augment wise here, uh, once again, you could look at anything that gives you an item. You could maybe take a Radiant item. Kind of a Deadly doesn't seem bad either, just because it's a very, very solid Gwen item. Uh, and then, you know, like the Lucky Love is another thing that, like, you know, maybe you take that. Um, PG only counts as two items. It, it doesn't, like, you know, break uh, Sugar Mancy or Sugar Craft um, or anything like that. Uh, the Golem used to count its items for Sugar Craft, and now it does not. Um, just so, something to keep in mind. Ah! Like, the, the greed part of me really wants to take a Radiant item here and just say, like, if I get any kind of passable or Radiant item for Gwen, I'll be happy, and it's two components. Uh, you might have to just take Tiny But Deadly because it's a good item in general, even though you don't get those components out of it. So we'll see what YBY ends up taking here. And yeah, he just says it's, it's too not good. We do get the Gwinsu's augment here, which is pretty good onto Jinx, but the problem is who else is holding this? It's horrible on everyone else. Um, and... Yeah, I just don't think it's that good of an option. So I assume we're just going to go for Tiny But Deadly. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe there's a world where you take the um the support golem. If it still was, uh, you know, like had that that really broken synergy, then, you know, that would feel really good. But sadly, that's not the case. Um, we're also really, really hoping to find like a Katarina sometime in our near future here that would reactivate that fairy, which I'm a little bit surprised that we ended up dropping out of fairy, but he really just wanted to play, in his opinion, the strongest board. And, and this board fits together very well. We get the two pyro in to give our team some attack speed. Um, also makes our, our pyro units get that execute. Um, so I think this board makes sense. But yeah, the other thing was, of course, being able to, to sell units so that we could move components over. Um, and oh my god, this 
this is what you need if you want to super stack up the uh the sugar craft here look at this six sugar craft three three like i was talking about the fast you get six in the fast you can stack up i mean the biggest tie roll was obviously finding the gwen early because that's the hardest one five percent odds to find um but then finding this bard as well finding the Soraka, and YBY does not hesitate at all. He immediately pivots into six Sugarcraft here because it's so many stacks. If he hovers over it, you'll see how many stacks, but we're at 174 here. We can do quick maths to see uh, how much we are getting here, but it is, it's gonna be a lot here. Uh, YBY, he always says this where he clicks really fast and it almost looks like he's gonna glitch out of the carousel. I would be looking at like Hodge component. I think that's the best final item for uh, Gwen here. Um, you could maybe take one of these for like BT, just take the higher cost one and it's uh shen pair here not shen two just yet uh 174 to 234 so that was a full 60 stacks here um yeah six per uh per component here and we have 10 components here so 60 stacks per round is really really good and yeah we're even gonna slam the cloak here of course so that we get that extra six stacks per i mean one component being six stacks is is huge here so love this from yby here i think it makes a lot of sense and his spot looks really, really nice. The only downside is Six Sugarcraft doesn't offer that much as far as like combat power. It's not as good as like getting in all of these other traits, but the fact that we're stacking up Sugarcraft so, so quickly, getting over to 300 stacks now feels really, really good. And, and this, you know, getting it this early is your best chance at getting to that final Sugarcraft cash out, which is, well, We'll we'll perhaps see it this game. We we can we can maybe uh we can maybe talk when uh when we get to, to the end of this game. We'll see. But yeah, as you can see, a lot of people with NASAs on their board. I think we just rotated into two NASAs. There are a lot of people playing around the Cinder unit who many people are talking about as being like the one of the most broken units right now is just Cinder, either Cinder reroll or just pushing levels on Cinder. It reminds me almost of like Timo last set where like just everyone was obsessed with Timo early set. Um and like honestly he was still broken towards the end of the set, but like he kind of Fell off a lot of people's radar. Uh, we fit the Akali in here for Warrior and Pyro here, which is nice. And yeah, I mean, we're just looking at pushing levels here. We get an extra two swords here, which is a little bit awkward. Uh, the BT is fantastic, and we'd really love it onto the Gwen. I would probably sell this Rumble here and move it over, but it looks like he's not interested in that. Yeah, okay, he is. I, I think this makes perfect sense. And then, yeah, the other sword into the Akali I like means that it's not stranded on this Jinx in case you want to move it somewhere later. Though, once we get to when you get to the the big seven stack cash out, you get a component, and then the second cash out after that is a golden remover. So you can kind of slam items willy nilly in this comp, um, and just be happy with that. But yeah, I mean the biggest thing for YBY here is getting these stacks, getting as many components as possible, which you know maybe we get an augment that gives us more. Um, and the other part is just surviving until we get to our max stacks. Ooh, okay, a lot of fun options here actually. So speaking of you know like more stacks, you could take this, which is like five components for yourself which is nice the problem is i don't think it's actually that good i'd much prefer just like a radiant tg here i think um and it's also two stacks for radiant tg which is not bad i think it counts as two stacks um i, I don't actually know Ooh, and then we get another option here which is this um i forget what this augment's called but it gives you a bunch of hp and then an extra uh, hp on top of that the interesting thing about sugarcraft is when you get a bunch of items already and we're gonna get a bunch of items late game um there is actually a lot of value in getting combat strength um so you could certainly it's it's an interesting balancing act between saying do you want more items or do you want more combat strength um there's also i i'm not that offended by this uh this one here what are what are items we don't do we have um we have redemption plus what bramble builds here so you could theoretically take this guarantees you heal cut a gwinsu for jinx you just go gwinsu Plus, I mean, I guess red buff onto the Jinx here, and it's it's a bunch of components. Uh, I don't actually dislike that that much. Um, and yep, it looks like that's gonna be the take here. I love it. Um, it's also, uh, you can finish this out of sword and just make GS here. So I would probably just triple item this Jinx here, I think. Um, also, wow, note the roll down. He is digging to try to make his board stronger on eight here. Cause like I said, we really, really, really just want to be as strong as possible and just make it to that final Sugarcraft cash out. If you can make it to the end of the game with Sugarcraft, it gets just stronger, stronger, stronger as you get more loot from it. It's it's a really interesting trade in that way in that it's kind of like an econ trade, but it also provides you some combat strength. And like, look, a fight like this, picking up something like an Olaf, you know, extra damage onto Jinx can end up being the diff here. We're also holding on to all these extra Jinxes. Ooh, this is an interesting call out here. He ends up selling, cause he had the option here to hold on to the Shen and then just keep items on, um, where did this T, oh, he got TG off augment. Okay, um, or off uh, off charm. 
But yeah, he had the option to keep Shen here, but he wanted to move Sugarcraft over to the Diana here. So we're now carrying a Tarek 1 as our main tank, which is a little bit scary. Um, but we do get Sugarcraft Diana, who is going to make good usage of that AP uh, and feel pretty good about it. That's a that's a wild choice to me. Um, I guess the other idea is that maybe it'd be a little too expensive. Um, but yeah, crazy. Uh, certainly looking at that Tarek on Carousel here, because that would kind of bring us back tank-wise, because... The, our issue right now is that our front line is kind of garbage. I'm a little sussed by that, uh, by selling the uh, the Shen, but, you know, all, all good. Uh, we do also pick up a second Diana here on Carousel, so if we are a high roller, we can just pick up a Diana too. There's the first big cash out there um, that is a full component. And yeah, look at look at this. I also, I, I think I did this last time I talked about this. I said full component last time. I don't know why I said full component. Uh, I don't believe these temporary items count for Sugarcraft here. We can do quick maths to see uh how many real full items do we have we have uh we have 14 uh no we have um we have 16 components in full items 16 um i mean we'll be able to tell yeah it's oh wait, no no it's more than 16 it's um 20 um so we should be gaining 120 sacks per round yeah and that was 120 so yeah fake items don't um don't provide anything for Sugarcraft. It would be kind of broken if they did because we would have just got an extra 6m6, an extra 36 stacks um, for Sugarcraft there with those Giants builds, which would be pretty nice. But I mean, YUY is just taking it for the combat stats. Uh, but yeah, I mean, rolling in town, continuing to pick up Jinxes. Uh, the only slightly sus thing about this spot, like I talked about, was our front line and the fact that we've rolled a lot here and we haven't found any extra Gwens. Uh, I fully expect us to pick up this Jinx here because we're rolling so much on eight at this point that like we're, we're just stuck here. Um, so yeah, I would sell this. Yep, I, I think that's perfect. And boom, here is our treasure dragon. Um, we can look for Diana items here. I mean, I generally, uh, and then we could also look for like potentially Olaf items or even Tariq items here. I don't completely hate this, just adaptive helm to Diana and then IE the Olaf is just like IE is not that good. Uh, but you don't you don't have that much rolling that you can do, but I'd probably roll this one. Okay, I think you just take BT Titans here. Um, I wonder if, like, where these items actually go, though. Because uh, obviously you could BT Titans Olaf, or you could look at, like, BTing Diana and then just Titansing Olaf. Um, I'm not actually sure which one is better. I think I might be tempted to just BT the Diana. Uh, you could also, honestly, you could go, like, Titans here and then BT here, as weird as that would look. Um, so I'm interested to see what uh, what these items end up being. But, you know, good, good solid items um, for our units here. This is a crazy... Uh, Instead of from Han Qing, who uh, took uh, Call to Chaos. Um, also, there that was weird. That like, oh right. The tr wait, that's um that's something that I uh, I didn't uh, think about, or I didn't uh, yeah I didn't think about from from YBY's perspective. But I think did did we get stacks on Treasure Dragon? Because I think we might have gotten double stacks because Treasure Dragon doesn't. Yeah, Treasure Dragon counts as like a a combat round in some ways. You make econ. Um, it doesn't count as a minion round. You can pick up charms actually this round. So we actually get another stack of sugar craft here, which is actually pretty crazy for us. And so that actually gets us to our first big cash out. There is the radiant, um, the the radiant uh, remover here, the the golden remover. We actually reforge edge of night. Um, it looked like, or no, we reforged bramble vest here. Yeah, just because like double bramble vest not amazing here. And he's also looking at reforging this bow here to look for maybe a better component here. Um, yeah, we are going to end up beating the Diana, like I talked about. Question is where the rest of these items go. Do we want to make, I would probably just look at making Vow and then just Edge of Night Diana, um, but we'll see here. Um, and continuing to roll down, right? So there, we have a lot of two-star units left to find, the biggest of which being Gwen too. Ooh, he looks like he's going to move BT over. And ooh, okay. Actually, <laughs> we popped uh, BT off and then sugar crafted it, but then uh, we, we just put it right back onto the Diana, which is quite hilarious, but you know, all good. Uh, close fight here down to 49 HP. We have 1k stacks and we're getting a lot every round, but still we really need stuff like this Gwen 2, this Olaf 2 to, to really get us there. Maybe even a Diana. Uh, we also pick up another um, Jinx here. Uh, so we are one off Jinx 3 as well. You can see the sport. It's so close to being good, but we're just rolling it down every round. Almost like we're, we're almost a bit too obsessed with playing tempo this game. I feel like because of the fact that we know that we just need to get enough rounds in this game so that we can get a, a huge sugar craft uh cash out but hey this fight pretty close another two unit loss here but we're three loss we need to find something here to upgrade our board because we're down to 25 hp really really scary but we're continuing five stacks off by the way of getting to the next level of cash out which is so so sad here um looking at potentially picking up i, I wanted to <laughs> why so tilted he did end up picking up that charm there i didn't actually get a chance to see what it was but eh, it's fine 
I'm not gonna worry about every single little charm. But hey, the Diana's doing work. Um, hitting the the Tarek too was big. Um, oh, it's the one that gives your team dodge at the, the start of combat. We are fighting this guy who is, I would say honestly, like one of the weaker boards. And still, this fight is a loss. So four loss streak down to 13 HP. We are going to get a next level cash out here, um, which is a pretty decent one, uh, I believe. But it's you know it's it's far from the final one here. Uh, on Carousel here, there's a lot of really really juicy stuff. Um, there's Preserver Emblem, which surely someone is going to end up snapping up here. There's another another Sugarcraft Emblem, but it doesn't really do that much for us. All this would allow, it would basically be a fawn, but we don't have the menus to fit. So YBY ends up taking the um, the Olaf 2 here, which I think makes a lot of sense. Now we have Olaf 2 that we can play around. We guaranteed that we got Olaf 2 here. We're not really even playing around Fairy, but we could also even think about reforging Fairy plus one. There's our cash out there. This is the one that contains a duplicator, which is a huge, huge spike for us. Um, and we do have these removers, so it's going to be interesting to see how we use them, because I do think, you, like, you, do, you certainly want to dupe... Um, oh, he he sold the Diana, though. That's the thing. He sold the Diana, so we can't even dupe Diana here, which really is rough. So we probably have to move items over to Olaf and not play around Diana here. I mean, you can maybe roll down and hope you find a Diana, but not that likely. Yeah, you just end up having to use the dupe uh, here onto the Jinx here, finding Jinx 3, move items to Olaf. Um, reforging to Eldritch, we do end up actually reforging into Sugarcraft here, which is kind of hilarious. Uh, and we do have a Diana that we can throw it onto. So we end up actually getting... Best of both worlds, we get the Olaf Hawk Carousel and we get the Sugarcraft Emblem, but look at this fight. It's so, so close. We barely lose it. Down to one HP. Now, I wouldn't thought review this game if it was uh, a seventh. I'll tell you that much. So, you know, we, we know that this, this game will at least be kind of interesting. We can get the uh, the Katarina in here for Warrior, but yeah, he ends up actually taking the three-star one cost this round, which is crazy to me, just hoping that it would be something solid. It ends up just being an Ash 3, and I remember looking from another POV at this board and being like, why does he have Ash 3 on his board? Um, but yeah, I mean, he got it off Charm and just had to throw something in. This fight, another close one, but look how this Olaf goes, and look, he's right before 1750 stacks. After this round, we're going to hit 1750 stacks here. We get another big cash out. This is the one that gives you a Radiant uh transmogrifier whatever it's called um and we can also get twitch in here who's a really really nice addition he's an extra hunter and he is frost on this board which actually fits but now we can make a radiant item the question is who wants to get this radiant item here uh and i think the most obvious answer is just jinx um and we we actually have some interesting questions here like do you do you want to just roll here to try to pick up gwen to do you just trust in your board uh we do end up picking up the edge of night here just to finish out diana items and uh the uh they even, uh, I forgot what this is, item's called, but the, the one, the, the Evan's Shroud, uh, Evan's Shroud, I've said it so many times, the second I said even, I got there, but yeah, Evan's Shroud, fantastic to give us that armor shred that we need, and yeah, look, we fight this guy, we fought last time, very, they were very, very strong, but we have the Radiant item now, so we're in a much better spot, and look at that, safely top three, we get the cash here, we are 2,004 out of 2,200 stacks, and we're really just looking for an extra unit to put in on this board here. He thinks about taking this, which is going to give you an extra um, an emblem, and he, he thought about making like warrior emblem there, but decided to just roll down more, and it ends up actually working out pretty well because we end up picking up the Jinx here. So we need to survive one more round here because 2,200 stacks is max stacked. If we can get there, then we have the, the final... Uh, level of Sugarcraft, which if you guys haven't seen is quite a, a treat. This was a really, really close fight, but we do end up winning. And there we have the guaranteed 2200. No, wait, it's 2190. I forgot about this. It's 2190 stacks here. We're 10 stacks off just barely. If we had two more components, one more full item, we would actually be there. But we're one stack off. YBY though is not worried at all. He's not tilted. He is locked in here. Just trying to win this last fight. He fights this person who has Melio 2, Smolder 2, a lot of scary stuff. But this Radiant GS onto Jinx does an insane amount of work. Uh, I believe this is also clone, I think. Um, and so we win that fight. And so now, now you guys can see the huge cash out here for YBY. He's, he's so happy about the cash out as well because this was so, so clutch. Um, you get a Fawn here and then look at the size of this thing. Donger J. The cake grows really, really big. Um, and uh, and let's just, let's just watch how this goes. If you guys haven't seen this, YBY just... An absolute showman. He removes his items off Jinx here just to let the cake go. Look at this. It just, it spits out all these treats. It's kind of like the fortune tree from last set. And it just, it one taps the entire board. It's too, too easy. Uh, we got one more fight of it just because we, uh, TFT Faker and girl had uh, a decent amount of HP. But 
here's the cash out for you guys who haven't seen it. It's yeah, it's similar to uh the fortune where it just it basically goes on the board and just kills everybody for you. And you get a fawn, which is, you know, pretty good. So as long as your board can survive for a few seconds, it just one taps everything. And it's just so satisfying to watch all the, the treats fly out and kill everybody. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just a, such a fun game to watch from YBY. A crazy game. The one HP, he was in seventh place. And then the comeback with Sugarcraft to make it to the final lobby tomorrow checkmate format so be sure to check out kai's channel i'll have a link in the description as well because he'll be broadcasting the the final day there hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like comment and subscribe check out my twitch and all my other links down below thank you guys for watching